Welcome to Fish to See. As you can see this week, uh, we're not on the lake. Hurricane has moved through. Same one that hit Florida. Hurricane Ian moved through the area over the weekend, so we couldn't fish this week. Didn't really get to fish last week. We were busy and had a PGA tournament in Charlotte that uh, had to be worked. So we've been we've been tied up. The next time we actually get to fish, probably, at least me, maybe Karina can get out at some point in time, will likely be at the Outer Banks. I really don't want to go that long without posting some type of video. So today I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to sit down and just make a video on the rigs we use. My, it is not going to be the most exciting video in the world, but it will be something I can reference in future videos if you need the exact how-to on how to tie what I'm using. I can send you back to this video, and I'm going to try to include as many of the rigs in fresh and salt water that I use as I possibly can, at least the ones I can think of. Uh, if it's something you know specific very specific to a type of fishing then um i'll just have to do it in that video but the generic ones that i do uh, i'm going to try to cover here and try to show a little bit more detail rather than just tying it on the boat so if i have to i'll use some brighter colored fishing line to demonstrate what i'm doing so you can see it on the camera Hopefully I'll be able just to tie it using regular line and hopefully it will show up good enough. So one of the rigs I use while I'm uh, fishing at the beach is uh, just a three hook chicken rig. It's very straightforward, very simple. This is a bait, this is a rig I like to use whenever I'm dropping down on um, like the offshore uh, reefs and wrecks and things of that nature for black sea bass, trigger fish. So to tie that, I'm starting off this uh, particular rig with 40 pound test. You can use, match the pound test to the type of fish you're anticipating on catching. So for these black sea bass and trigger fish, 40 pound test is gonna be plenty. If I was going out deeper for grouper or something, you can use the exact same rig, just increase your uh, pound test on your rig just a little bit. The uh, And then I'm putting three all hooks on this particular rig. These three all hooks are gonna be perfect for hooking some squid on or uh, sand fleas or something like that using that for catching these black sea bass and trigger fish. If I was going after grouper, you, know, you can go on up to you know, five all, eight all hook, depending on your bait. So match your hook to your bait. That's the biggest point that I can make about this rig. So to start off with, at the very top, and I've not, I've not cut my leader off the spool yet, it's still on here. So first thing I'll do is just with a standard old, uh, just a standard barrel swivel. Once again, match it to the weight, the size of your barrel swivel to what you're using. And I'm going to tie this uh, tie this on with just an improved clinch knot. That's all I'm going to do. Nothing fancy here. So it's just a improved clinch knot. Since I'm using really heavy line, I only do four twist and back through just. And back through again. Wet that down. Pull that down tight. Make sure you get it really properly seated. You don't want that coming loose. Alright. Once that's seated. 
We'll trim down the tag end down as close as you can get it. All right, so now you have your leader with your started. This is what will be tied to the main line. And then now we're going to start our dropper loops. We want to come down. I come down about four inches from the swivel and get paint and get it in your hand, and then you'll come out about sixteen inches. Of course, the phone would ring. Now you're going to throw a loop in your line. So you're just going to push a loop in to your line, and then twist it on this heavy line four times. One two, three, four. The bottom of your loop will go through the middle of those twists you made. Then what you're going to do is you're going to catch this part you just passed through in your teeth and pull it tight. And this is where you're going to set your length of the dropper loop. So, I like my dropper loops about that long because it keeps them sticking out from the main line. You don't allow your hook to come back very easily and hook up on your main line. So to get the spacing right, I'm going to come up about four or five inches and get it in my hand again. Get yourself another, I'm going to actually increase this to about seven inches. Get it your another 16 inches of line, throw another loop. Four twists. One, two, three, four. Bottom of your loop up to the middle of those twists up at the top. Same thing again. And just lock that down. All right. I like the distance those are apart, so I'm going to do another seven inches. Another 16. And if you want longer loops, increase your length right here. Because rule of thumb is most of the time it's um, double whatever it is, your um, the size of the loop you want, like the size of your dropper, if you want it to be you know, four or five inches, you'll need at least 10 inches. But on this heavy line, you have to have a lot more. But So I go about 15, 16 inches, make my loop. One, two three, four, bottom of the loop, through the top, just like that. Now I got three droppers. Then we'll come down, figure out how far you want your weight. And this will depend on the structure and stuff you're fishing. You don't want your bottom hook to be right up against your sinker. So you want some room there to keep it off the structure. So I'm going to give it about 15 inches. I'll cut that. To make a place for your sinker, I'm just going to double it. Once you get it doubled, you're just going to Loop it through. And now you got a loop for your sinker. And we're going to put three hooks on here. And I'm using, for this rig, I'm using three all non-offset circle hooks, these trocars. So with your hook, you always want to come through with your Leader through the back side of the eye first. Get that small enough. Pull it 
pull that out, pass it right through. I always, I always, instead of just doing one pass with mine, I always push it through, then make a, a twist. Seems to lock it down better. Keeps it from trying to move. There you go. Snail dropper. And we're going to do that for uh, all three of them. Same exact process. Paint your loop down good. And by having these three hooks on one rig, you can change your baits up too. You can use different baits at the same time. See what they're hitting on. You put squid on one, cut bait on another. All right, that's what it looks like. Swivel and three hooks and then your weight. So that's that uh, three hook dropper rig. The next rig I'm going to go over is the uh, my favorite rig to use at the beach. It's the whiting rig or uh, spot, sea mullet, pompano, whatever you want to call it. They come in a pack that look like this. I buy these packs of them and save the packaging and whenever I run out of these I used to refill them by tying them myself. It saves me about $1.50 per, per rig by tying it myself. And I tie it with 30 pound mono. Start off with just a barrel swivel. It's a standard old, nothing special barrel swivel. Just tie that on with an improved clinch knot. Wrap it five times through your bottom loop, through the loop you make, wet it, and pull it down. Make sure it's seated properly because it will come untied if you do not. We'll trim that tag end up here in just a minute. So I'm going to come down about five, four or five inches from my swivel, pinch it, and then come out about 12, 13 inches. So we're going to come out, we come down from the swivel about five inches, pinch it, measure out another 14 inches, and you're going to throw a loop. Then you're going to make your tie six, go around the doubled line, you're going to twist it around six times. Three, four, five, six. Now you have where you was twisting them together an open gap right there. So you're going to take the bottom of your loop and push it through this open gap. So once you do that, you have something that looks like this. You're going to catch this in your teeth. Now this is where you're going to set the length of your dropper loop. The longer you want your dropper loop to be, the further you pull it out with your teeth. If you want it shorter, you leave it closer and then cinch it down. And that's a perfect length for me on mine. I like that length because it keeps it from getting tangled up on the uh, main line. So we're going to come down another, we're going to come down about four inches, get another 14 inches, throw a loop, twist it six times.
once again you'll have this gap that you're going to push the bottom of the loop through catch that in your teeth and set your next dropper loop just like that now i got a perfect distance between them two dropper loops by measuring it out like that now figure out how far you want your sinker to be down this is personal preference i like mine about 12 13 inches so i want it to be about right there that's why i want my sinker so i'm going to give me just a few more inches for uh tying i want to take a snap lock swivel it's an offshore angler snap slot snap lock swivel just going to tie that on with another improved clinch knot So now we're going to put the hooks on this sucker. Now I use number four beak hooks. They're kind of packaged like that. That number four beak hook will catch a lot of different fish and it has a long shank on it. If you get a deep hooked fish, you can really get your pliers on it really well to pull that hook out without hurting the fish. But before we go on with the beak hook, we're going to put, a, I got these tiny plastic beads to thread on the line before the hook. So this tiny plastic bead, what it does is this loop, it, it keeps your lines together. That's what the purpose of these beads are. And it may provide a little extra attraction, who knows, but the main purpose is it keeps your loop closed so it don't pop open. So threading that on, so that's just threaded onto my loop. Now we're going to put the hook on. Now the hook, you want to go in from the back side because whenever pressure gets applied to this, the hook wants to rotate in towards the pressure. So if you put this on from the hook side, whenever pressure gets applied, it will want to rotate the hook out of the fish's mouth. So you want the hook to rotate into the fish and not out. So you come in from the back side of the hook. And this heavier line is kind of hard to get through these eyes sometimes. Sometimes you gotta squish it down a little bit with a pair of pliers. Now that does hurt your, you know, pound test. It, that actually damages the line. So it's better if you don't have to do that. But, you know, 30 pound test and going through, doubled through that little eye on that hook. Sometimes you got to do it. So I'm going to pull that. I'm going to pass it through the open loop, twist it, and go through again. So it creates a twisted snail right there on the shank of the hook. And that will go nowhere. And whenever pressure gets applied, if you're fighting a fish, you think a little fish has come up and got that. That line is going to be rotating that hook into the fish and not out. So we're going to put one more of those on. Don't forget the bead. So there's my bead. That one just happened to be red. <laughs> Going in from the back side once again. Open loop once, twist it, back through. Now it's got a tied snail. And that will go nowhere. Bait that up with some squid, blood worms, cut bait, whatever you desire. We're gonna go back and trim these tag ends now. closer you get them tag ends trimmed, the less you get tangled, so cut them down as close as you can. Because if you seated it properly, the knot won't slip. You don't have to worry about needing the tag end. Now 
There it is. So you sinker, hook, hook, swivel. And I'm gonna fold this up and I recycle these little containers they come in. But that's it. Commercial commercial seamalt rig, hand tied. And now you know, whenever you're not making a video on it, I can tie one of these in about a minute, minute and a half, if I'm not trying to explain stuff. So for a minute, minute and a half, two minutes at the most, you know, saving you a dollar fifty on every one you tie, and I lose a pile of them, as evidenced by all these empty, all these empty rigs, is ones I've lost last beach trip. I just save them, and I refill them before I go again, so that way I know I got plenty. So that's how I tie the sea mullet rig. This rig that I'm going to show you now is a drum fishing style type rig where you would typically use a uh, snailed hook, something pretty, pretty short. Um, the hook size would vary depending on the bait and what type of fish you're going after. I'm tying this one with a like a five all hook and you know, that's going to cover a good variety of, of baits, and I'm going to tie it with 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. So, to snail a hook, typically I'm going to cut off the length that I'm wanting to make my leader the, or the rig. So, these sliding drum rigs are typically pretty short between your hook and your swivel because they're close to the bottom, you're on a sliding sinker fish come by pick this up he can run not feel the weight until he's hooked so short little leader and so I'm going to pre-cut that so I'm going to take I want to start out with about 10 11 inches of line and go ahead and snip that off so with that line you're going to go in on these hooks. You're going to go in from the back side to snail it. So now you've got your line laying down the shank of the hook. You're going to take this and wrap it. You're going to, that first wrap is going to be the hardest. Now, once you got that first wrap locked in, you're going to go down six times, just as tight as you can make these wraps. One, two, three, and six. And now, you're going to take your tag in and go back up through and lock that down. And that is going nowhere. So now there's your snailed hook. To the other side, I tie on an appropriate weight barrel swivel. You can also crimp this barrel swivel also if you're, uh, depending on the type of line you're using. If your line's too heavy for this, Cramp it on or uh, throw a loop in it to tie the line. I like using a, personally, I like using the barrel swivel. Trim that down. There it is. There's your. I'll trim this tag in down as well. But that's your drum, drum rig. Well, thanks for sticking with us. That was uh, three of my favorite saltwater rigs that I like using. That's three of the ones that I make all the time. Most commonly used whenever I'm there. And if I pop up with a rig that I didn't cover right here, one of those three rigs, then I'll be sure to explain it in the video that I use it in. But once again, thanks for sticking with us.
this video is kind of strange but the weather's crappy so we're here making rigs figure i'd take you along with us we will see you hopefully at the outer ranks very soon and maybe karina will get out and get something filmed before we head down that way but if not i'll see you at the outer banks thanks for sticking with us we'll catch you next time